Design systems are made of building blocks. Building blocks that cascade from most simple to most complex. Because the more complex elements depend on the more simple ones, it's important that we follow a certain order of operations when adding things to DSM. Before adding complex components to a DSM library, it's important that we add the simpler, more primitive building blocks, like colors, followed by layer styles and text styles, then icons, before bringing in our components from simplest to most complex. Let's take a look at each step in detail. Start by adding your colors to DSM and give each color a name. But name your colors based on their purpose rather than what the colors look like. For example, your primary brand color should be something like primary brand rather than dark blue. This ensures that updating colors in the future won't break naming conventions, which is especially important when developers are using design tokens to bring colors into code. We'll talk more about design tokens in another video. Layer styles are a powerful way to save style attributes like shadows, borders, and fills that are applied to a number of different layers and shapes. We recommend using these shared layer styles throughout your document, even within symbols, and adding them to DSM after colors. Also, be sure to keep your naming convention consistent with your colors. It's also very practical to assign layer styles to layers in nested components, which will allow them to become overrides to customize or show variants. In this example, you can see that we have two different backgrounds based on whether this media card is being used as a modal or not. It allows us to keep the core component consistent, but allows for quick customization based on the use case. To make use of textiles, all text within your symbols needs to be linked to a saved textile before adding those symbols to DSM. And before adding a symbol, double check to make sure textiles are in sync between the layer and the style itself. When a text layer's color, font, alignment, etc. has been tweaked and deviates from the textile applied to it, you'll see an asterisk appear next to the textile's name on the inspector. When this happens, there are two possible solutions. If the text layer needs to be updated to match the saved style, open the dropdown and choose Reset Text Style. If the saved text style needs to be updated to match the selected layer, choose Update Text Style. Be sure to save your icons as symbols so they can later be used as overrides. And use layer styles for color fills, not color symbol masks. When it comes to nested symbol overrides, DSM and Sketch work the same way, grouping symbols together based on their pixel dimensions. This means all of your icons should be grouped into standardized sizes to allow corresponding overrides to apply. For example, having all your small icons at exactly 24 by 24 pixels so they become interchangeable. When possible, nest simpler symbols within larger, more complex ones before adding them to DSM. As you add icons, again make sure the variants of the nested symbol are the same size so that they appear properly in the override section of the inspector. Be sure the layer name of nested symbols corresponds with the text you want to display in the override panel. You can also manage which layers show up as overrides by selecting a master symbol, then checking or unchecking the available overrides on the inspector. For maximum flexibility, create components in a responsive format, taking advantage of the fluid width and height options available within Sketch. In addition to that, many teams create specific versions of each symbol for different screen sizes, which allow them to clearly set any of their own breakpoints for particular components or text groups. Need more assistance? Our dedicated team of design system specialists can help you and your enterprise team get started building out your world-class system. Reach out to us here at Envision for more details on how to get started.